What are your takeaways from a consumer perspective? It's very interesting. I personally, I had a chance to play with it a couple of weeks ago. I love the bigger screen. I think that being able to replace a tablet and your computer by just one device you have with you, I think it's a great thing and a lot of people are going to like that. And if you remember when the Note 7 was announced, everybody loved it until it started exploding. So as long as they fix the exploding part, I think they're in good shape. And how much do you think the exploding issues will sort of impact new sales? It won't. It's going to be a joke for the first few weeks when it hits stores. People are going to talk about it. People have been laughing about it for the last year. But I think in the end, Samsung is going to be laughing all the way to the bank. Selena, you were at the event. How did Samsung sell this new phone? Did they refer to any of the drama from last year? There was a lot of excitement at the end in a gigantic line waiting to get in hours before the event. And at the very start, they actually addressed the exploding, exploding smartphone issue. There wasn't laughter yet. They addressed it with a sense of gravitas. Uh, DJ Co uh, went out there, an executive at Samsung, and said, uh, you know, we will never forget what happened but we thank our fans for helping to inspire us and move us forward so a really big part of the presentation the event was focusing on the note loyalists the people who stuck with the phone even after after it exploded and came back and were excited to buy the note 8 so there was definitely a lot of excitement and from the people I spoke to there it seems like they emphatically think that Samsung has mostly gotten over the debacle of last year Let's talk about market share, Mark. Samsung regained the number one position in the global smartphone market earlier this year, 23%. Apple, meantime, 12%. Huawei 11%. Will the new Note 8, the new iPhone coming in September, the essential phone, will that shake up the numbers significantly? Well, first of all, I don't think the essential phone is going to shake up the numbers. I think it's going to be a niche player. Mm -hmm. You've seen some of the smaller Chinese makers, OnePlus, Oppo, they're playing in that same game. I think essential will be happy with that. They're not. They're probably not even going to get a single percentage point. Apple, you know, these Chinese makers, to your point, Xiaomi and Huawei, they're right on Apple's back. Maybe they'll cross them, maybe they won't. We'll see. The iPhone's going to be constrained for the first few months of the launch, the premium model that is, but I think we're going to get a good indication of where the Apple versus Samsung fight is going to be probably in around six months' time. Selena, what are we seeing in terms of current estimates for sales of the new Samsung phone? Well, it's hard to say right now, but it's probably going to top what it was for the Note 7 and also their recent S8 phone uh, blew uh, the previous versions out of the water. Uh, there's a lot of excitement here, and Samsung is regaining its lead as a number one smartphone player. Estimates say that in the United States, both Apple and Samsung have about three quarters of the market. There's a lot of stickiness to the Samsung ecosystem. And so the sales expectations are pretty robust right now. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, Mark, but you know, remind us where Samsung has the edge in terms of the actual features as compared to what you're expecting with the new iPhone. That's a good question, and I think that's something not a lot of people understand. Samsung is heavily vertically integrated. So they're first with a lot of stuff. Apple was really ahead in chips, but Samsung has been ahead of the pack in some chip-related things too. Of course, the biggest things, and I, I hate to say this, the battery. They make some of their own components for batteries. They sell to Apple. They make displays, so they make their own screens. They also make Apple screens. If I was in charge of Samsung, why would I want to give my biggest competitor that much priority in terms of the screens. I would want them in my products first. That's why you see all these advanced screen technologies appear in the Samsung devices even three and four years before you see it in an iPhone. And Apple has been taking steps to sort of minimize its dependence on Samsung. Selena, what are customers most excited about? You know, is it the OLED screen? Is it the tried and true battery life? You know, what, what do they want? Why are they buying it? I think one of the biggest differentiators of the Note is the gigantic screen and the infinity display, the curve edge so that you get as much room as possible and because of that gigantic screen you can do a lot more without having to scroll you can launch two apps at the same time so say you're uh, on your way to work and you want to have Google Maps pulled about the same time Spotify is going you don't have to scroll back and forth between apps as much uh, there's also the dual camera lens on the back so that you can take more professional looking photos consumers were very excited about that at the event it means you can have the soft focus and uh, focus more on the figure that you were trying to take the photo of. And the other big uh, differentiator here is that stylus. It means that you can write and draw on your phone like you're holding a pen and pad. And those are the main things that the consumers were most excited about at the event.